A gust of wind tussles the leaves in the forest. Charlotte is heading west, as far from the temple as possible. If she gathers some supplies, perhaps she could reach the coast. Her mother once told her about a dream she had of sailing west across the ocean, to another world. Perhaps Charlotte could leave this hateful place behind and find a new home. A branch cracks behind her. She turns around, instinctively holding Victor closer to her chest. Is someone following them? She hurries onward, reaching a stony bridge leading to a village on a mossy hill. It is risky to stop the village, but she needs supplies. Charlotte places Victor in the scarf wrapped around her torso. He is too weak to move, too weak to speak. What the Black Cloaks did to him in the temple changed him. To build his strength back, she needs to get some food and medicine. Walking down the village's narrow streets, she reaches the market. Her mother taught her how to get what she needed from a vendor's stall. Distract them and only take what you can carry. Leave before you are noticed. Better to be safe than captured. She spots a vendor selling herbs and ointments. Medicine is a priority. Charlotte pulls her hood over her face and approaches the stall slowly. Then she waits for an opportunity. When the vendor turns to address another customer, she extends her arm and snatches a few vials. Then she spots a pile of fruit at the back of the stall. Risky, but the sweet smell of ripe apples is enchanting. She glances at the vendor, who is arguing over prices. She crouches and slowly sneaks past him. When she reaches for the basket of fruit, she sees what lies under it. Cured cheese. She grabs a large piece and shoves it in her bag with a few apples. Then she crouches under the stall and exits the opposite way she came in, leaving the vendor behind. Walking hurriedly, she heads down the street where beggars are kindling rubbish. Despite the stink, the warmth of the flames feels good. Suddenly, a heavy hand falls on her shoulder. A towering man with a bow in his hand is staring down at her. He smiles menacingly. Hunters were talking about you. You're gonna make me a rich man. Charlotte kicks the burning pile of garbage and embers spill on the ground, igniting a puddle of wine. Panic spreads faster than flames as several villagers push the beggars who are trying to stamp out the fire. Amid the commotion, Charlotte darts off, but the menacing villager snatches her bag, bringing her to a full stop. Panicking, she tears the strap of her bag and lets its contents spill onto the ground. Then she runs at full speed until she reaches the stony bridge. Looking over her shoulder, she sees black smoke billowing from the village. Her stomach churns. She once saw a face licked by flames before, cheeks charred like crisp leaves. She bites her tongue, trying to repress the memory. She cannot slow down. The villagers could be on her chase. She heads into the woods, running until she could no longer smell smoke in the air. Charlotte reaches a muddy patch in the woods. Going further this way would leave a trail. Right now, she could not risk it. One of the villagers could be tracking them. The river is the safer route since it would leave no trail behind. She steps into the icy water, her oversized boots splashing around. In seconds, her clothes are drenched. When the wind howls, her freezing flesh is set ablaze. After several hours of trekking in ice-cold water, she reaches the bottom of a colossal waterfall, the end of the road. A plateau lies above, midway between the river and the top of the waterfall. It would make for a difficult climb, but it is possible. If she reaches this plateau, the view would allow her to spot any villager on her trail. She could sleep soundly for the first time in weeks. Looking down at Victor wrapped in her scarf, she sees how pale he looks. They both need their rest. Charlotte examines the rock wall surrounding the waterfall. 
looking for holds and grips in the boulder's shapes. Then she tightens her scarf around Victor to keep him in place. She reaches the cliff and grabs the rock wall. One foot up, then another. Her arms tire first. She lands her right foot on a protuberant boulder and shifts her weight to relax her muscles. But her heel slides out of her oversized boot. Ignoring her aching arms, she holds onto the cliff, pushing her foot hard against the boulder to force the boot back on. But the boulder shifts under the pressure and comes loose. Suddenly, there is nothing but air under her right foot. The boulder tumbles down the cliff along with her boot plunging into the river. Charlotte's arms are shaking and she cannot move. Her fingers are slipping away one by one. Soon she will tumble down just like that boulder and plummet to her death. Her breathing becomes ragged. Is this the end? She promised Victor she would save him. That one day they would be free. Is this the best she could do? A brutal plunge to their death? No, she promised him. She would save him, like she saved Mama. Charlotte closes her prickling eyes. Her last finger is slipping. Charlotte feels something cold against her shoulder. She opens her eyes and sees Victor's hand there. That is their signal. He would tap her shoulder when he needed something. She would hold his hand when she needed his attention. But he is too weak to move. Did he change position when the boulder slipped from under her? Unless he is afraid, like her. Maybe he is begging her to save him. Charlotte inhales deeply, ignoring her burning arms. She looks up and sees another large boulder to her right a bit higher. If she lunges, she could reach it. But one false move and she would land in the river, her head smashed on rocks. Her heart is beating wildly, but she is no longer paralyzed. Victor needs her, and she would do anything to save him. Digging her nails into the rock wall, Charlotte pulls with all her might and jumps. As she lunges into the air, her heart drops. Then her right foot lands on the higher boulder, which instantly shifts from under her. Terrified, she realizes that she is falling, slowly. Frantically grasping at the wall, she sways her arms, ignoring the sharp rocks tearing and burning her flesh. She closes her eyes as she slides down, but her right arm finds a grip, bringing her fall to a stop. As she holds on, her right foot lands on something solid, and she carefully shifts her weight on it. Her ears are ringing wildly and her whole body is pressed against the jagged edge of the cliff. She looks over her shoulder at Victor. He is cocooned in her scarf, safely. Gritting her teeth, Charlotte looks up. The edge of the plateau is about a twice high. She can do this. Charlotte finds a grip for her left arm. Then she pulls, one foot up, then another. On and on for what seems like an eternity. All the way up until she heaves herself over the edge of the plateau, safe. Charlotte collapses on the plateau. For a moment during the climb, she thought it was over. The fear of death is nothing to be ashamed of, but something else happened. For a second, she felt a fleeting relief when contemplating death. And that worries her more than the witch hunters, more than the black cloaks. Because it means that she betrayed Victor. For a moment, she abandoned him. How could she be so cowardly and selfish? Charlotte presses her hand over his cheek, ice cold. Isn't he already gone? No, she could not accept that. Losing him would be like laying down in a grave and waiting for soil to smother her. He is her, and she is him. They are one. She caresses his pale cheek. 
I promise you that one day I will take you far away from here, and we will be safe forever. A dark fog coils at her feet as her eyelids become heavy. Then her eyes close. Charlotte opens her eyes. She sits up slowly. She must have fainted. Instead of looking at the view, she looks down at Victor, who seems asleep. Is he? No. Charlotte could see some color on his cheeks. He will get better. Getting back on her feet, she examines her surroundings. A forest of evergreen trees stands ahead. And behind her, she gasps at the view. Tall pines spread west to the shoreline, where dark waves roll against a long bobbing wharf. A harbor of ships heading west. To admire the ocean view, Charlotte sits on a bed of soft branches. The sun is setting, spilling blood into the sky. She loosens her scarf, unveiling Victor's face so he can see the boats. She reaches for his hand and grabs it, ice cold and limp. Charlotte stifles a sob. Everything is fine. Victor is just weakened by their journey. He is still here with her. Tonight they will rest and he will get better. Below, large ships are sailing toward the misty horizon, heading further west. They remind her of her mother's dream. When the Black Cloaks were doing their worst to her, she held on to her mother's words. Charlotte never honestly believed in her mother's dream of sailing west. It was just a beautiful escape. But now it is time to believe. A new dream for a new life. Charlotte takes off her hat and wraps it around Victor's hands. Do you know what lies beyond the horizon? Mama told me once. She dreamt of that place just before she fell sick. She said that there is another world across the ocean. A place with clean rivers and sweet syrup dripping from the trees. A whole other world for us to be free. Do you see that big ship below? No answer. Maybe Victor is afraid of dreaming aloud. Some dreams are too delicate to be spoken, but not hers. Charlotte brushes off a drop of rain from Victor's pale brow. Everything will be all right, Victor. Just imagine the voyage with me. One day, we will sail far away from here. We would sleep in a bed made of ropes suspended in the air. Each rolling wave would swing our bed from side to side, lulling us to sleep. After a few weeks, we'd reach land. Then we would find a little house by a creek. In the morning, we would work in a field of golden crops. Each day, we'd drink the sun and eat the moon, and no storm would hit us. No men would burn us. No monsters would hurt us. We would live together, free. Our lives would be so normal, he would miss our adventures. Maybe one day you'll even miss this view. I promise you, one day we will be free. We'll find a place where we belong. All three of us. Her voice breaks. No, they could never be all three again. Their mother is gone. Charlotte looks down at Victor. He is so weak that she could barely see his chest rise. No, he is just sick. He needs to rest. She cannot pay her doubts any attention. If she does, she would be the next one to die. And then all three of them would be lost. Charlotte closes her eyes. She can almost feel the lush leaves brushing against her legs as she runs through an open field. Victor is laughing in her arms. They are far away from here.
Cold winds howl against the cliff like hungry beasts. A songbird wakes Charlotte. She opens her eyes, feeling every inch of her body protesting in pain. Her throat feels coated in sand. Her temples throb. She feels sick. She looks down at Victor, who got paler overnight. Her fingers curl into a fist. How is she supposed to take care of her brother when her own mother failed? Charlotte feels so lost without her. Looking up, she spots the singing bird, a little sparrow. Images flash through her mind, soft feathers, sharp claws, and a delicate neck in her hands. Blood dripping from her brow as black cloaks beat her, until she wrapped her hands around the sparrow's neck and twisted. They forced her to do monstrous things. But she is no monster. Yet she was treated as one. And why? Because Victor is part of her, and she is part of him. They are one, united by blood and bone. They cry double the tears when hurt. They laugh twice over when glad. And even in their darkest moments, they are never alone. Side by side, forever. Who else could say the same? And yet they pay a heavy price for this gift. They are of one blood and bone. If one perishes, what remains? The night sky is clear and speckled with stars. Charlotte feels too sick to move. Victor must feel worse. Or does he? A low, feral growl echoes from the woods. Charlotte can barely see ahead, but the hairs on her neck rise. Something in the dark watches her. She grabs Victor's hand. Stay calm. Holding a large branch in her trembling hands, she walks towards the noise. Wolves are known to hunt far from villages. The further she travels, the higher the risks of running into one. While scanning the darkness, she spots a crimson trail on the glittering snow. Further ahead, a large wolf is lying in the snow, its gray fur marred with blood. An arrow is planted in its neck. Hunters must have left it to die. The wolf growls as its dark eyes land on her, but seems too weak to move. Then she hears a high-pitched cry. A little white cub hides under the wolf's leg. A dying wolf and its wailing baby, striving to survive. Charlotte knows what she must do, and she hates herself for it. She leans over and grabs the tiny pup into her hands. The pup snaps at her fingers, but its teeth are too tiny to cause any real pain. Howling, the wolf struggles to get back on its feet, but its legs buckle under its weight and crash into the snow. Charlotte ignores the dying wolf's whimpers and digs a hole in the snow too deep for the pup to climb out of. When Charlotte's own mother screamed in agony, she wished someone would have ended her suffering. Charlotte approaches the pup's mother with trembling hands. The wolf growls as she grabs the arrow. In one swift motion, she pulls it out. The wolf howls in anguish and collapses. The cub cries in response, frantically digging itself out of the snow. Charlotte waves her branch at the pup and screams. Run! Run! The pup growls weakly, then darts off into the night. Charlotte's vision blurs as tears mingle with the blood splattered across her face. Is she any better than these hunters? The wolf was too far gone. Such unnecessary pain was cruel. And the hunters would have trapped its pup if it remained close. A life of captivity with its mother's killers. No, Charlotte did them both a mercy. She knows what it is like to be captured by such monsters. Charlotte's tears would not stop. Her remorse for killing the wolf triggered a growing tightness in her chest. Two years ago, she would never have been able to kill another being. And yet, 
is it humane to watch an innocent being suffer cruelly to death? She would have preferred walking away, but she knows better. Her mother's suffering taught her better. When her mother was captured by witch hunters, Charlotte convinced herself that there was nothing she could do. But it was not entirely true. The hunters slept in a wooden shed behind the church near the woods. The shed was so old and dry, a spark could have sent it blazing. And yet she did nothing but wait for the trial. Then she had to watch her own mother burn to death. There had been other missed opportunities to prevent the suffering of innocence. Every time her mother's voice held her back. Let no one pull you so low as to hate them. In the end, you will hate yourself most for it. But Mama is gone now. Charlotte watched the flames melt her face as she cried out in agony. Now Victor is all she has left. She looks down at him. His cheeks have a bluish hue. Maybe he is past the point of no return. Isn't she? No. He will get better. They are one, united by blood and bone. He would never leave her behind. A loud noise wakes Charlotte at dawn. A pile of ashes lies at her feet, the fire long gone. Something cracks behind her. A tall man emerges from the tree line. She remembers him, the villager who tore out her bag at the market. He raises his arm, revealing his bow. Charlotte's heart drops as she sees him draw. Stumbling to her feet, she darts off into the woods. As arrows land beside her, she keeps her eyes fixed on the ground to avoid protuberant roots. Panicking, she rushes her step and her left foot lands on a stump, twisting her ankle awkwardly. She tumbles down to the ground. An arrow lands next to her face, slicing her cheek. Charlotte stifles a scream as she gets back on her feet. Her ankle is throbbing painfully. Then something sharp stabs her leg and everything slows down. Falling to her knees, she looks down and sees an arrow planted in her calf. A jolt of electricity courses through her. She screams in agony. Panting, she looks down at Victor. His eyes are blank, as if ready for death. She promised him. Charlotte grits her teeth and takes a step forward dragging her injured leg. The pain is torturous, but she ignores it. Victor needs her. Looking up, she sees a large oak tree perched over a small hill. She could hide there. Every step uphill is an agonizing cycle of tearing and burning. She bites her tongue to stifle her cries, tasting blood. Once at the top, she hides behind the oak tree to catch her breath. But her vision blurs and she collapses into a pile of dead leaves. The tip of the arrow dug underneath her skin, tearing up her tissues. She presses her palm against her burning wound. So much blood. Her ears are ringing. Nowhere to run. No escape. Sailing to the New World is an impossible dream. A branch cracks behind her. Charlotte caresses Victor's cheek. They are one, united by blood and bone. He is her and she is him. If one perishes, what remains? Groaning in pain, she sits up slowly. Nothing will tear them apart. Not even death. They are side by side forever.